Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another reaction video here today. We're going to do another episode of Doctor Who into the final specials of David Tennant's tenure, the 2009 yes specials. Um, and yeah, we had the Christmas episode last time. The next Doctor, check it out if you haven't already. And yeah, I mean there are four specials in 2009. There were, uh, and I've watched one off camera, and we got the final three to get through. Um, and so yeah, let me talk about Planet of the Dead, shall I? Which, I mean, by the fact no one suggested it, and some of the opinions I've seen of it, fair enough. So, <laughs> let's go over it, God. Uh, Zoe Slate, Ruffy Stenders, robbed a golden chalice and then paid to use a bus with diamonds. Yep. Just as the Doctor got on chocolate Easter egg in hand, it was the Easter special after all, tis the season. Tis the season. The bus entered a tunnel and then got teleported to a desolated desert planet don't worry a hole in space time is still there to go through and the driver's flesh got burned off man he's just a skeleton now that's fun uh everybody panicked but the doctor calmed them all down like only the doctor can give a resounding speech you know that man uh unit moved into the tunnel and the doctor made a call to them and god did they fanboy army of humanoid flies showed up having crashed too threatened murder um fun fun uh, but the Doctor talked his way out of it, as he always does. Uh, it turns out the planet was thriving society as of a year ago, so what the hell happened to it? Oh, a swarm of metal alien manta rays are on their way to eat us. And they destroyed this planet. And they want to go through the wormhole and destroy the Earth. That's fun. Uh, Zoe Slater stole the fly ship's power cell, and the manta rays attacked. The Doc and her got on the bus just in time, clamped it up, and used a stolen chalice... Uh, as unit got set to close the wormhole over Malcolm's dead body. Shout out Malcolm. Lee, Lee Mac? Not Lee Mac. Lee Evans. A real one. He was a real one. Uh, Doctor drove through the wormhole. So did a few of the manta rays. Malcolm closed the wormhole. Our unit took him out. Zoe Slayer of EastEnders kissed the Doctor. Fair enough. Malcolm confessed his love to the Doctor. Fair enough. Um, the Doctor got Academy Award winning actor Daniel Kaluuya. Lovely seeing you, mate. A job with unit. And then they gave him his TARDIS to get going. So he's later tries to go with the Doctor, who said no thieves allowed, sadly. Also, he's in his depression era sleigh, uh, where he's like, I'm going to be alone, thank you very much. And she got arrested. Uh, also, Yolanda, off EastEnders, was also there. A lot of EastEnders people this time around. She was a bit psychic. She said the Doctor's song was ending because it is returning through the dark and something about four knocks. You know, I'm assuming four specials, four knocks, bada bing, bada boom. Um, and as a parting gift, he undid Zoe's cuffs with his screwdriver so she could get away too. Oh, God, a lot happened. It was an hour-long special after all. And without further ado, let's just get into an apparently very good special. <laughs> with the second of the four specials, The Waters of Mars. Hello, Mom. That's it. It's your little wave. Uncle soon called it. He keeps saying, you must be missing her. I said, I'm gone for over two years now. I'm getting used to it. Breaking up. Must be the solar flare. Aw. I mean, very lonely being a colony on Mars, you know, so far away from Earth. Signals easily can get interrupted there. Tough. So far away from family. Um... And while the Doctor's here, you know. <laughs> Comes to desolate Mars to try and, you know, be alone. Whole colony here, though. God. Can't get away from people, can you, Doc? Radio clamp down. Back inside. Get this on camera. Looks good. We wasted an entire solar panel. It's a joke. An empty planet. And what do we do? Put up cheap jokes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a solid joke. You know, you come to a fully desolate planet, you put up a no trespass side. That's a funny joke, mate. you got to chill out. Yuri's pulled a good one there. And it also follows the very funny moment of a trespasser showing up. <laughs> oh, Doctor. Oh, beautiful. Rotate. Slowly. You are under arrest for trespassing. Gadget, gadget. He ain't looking too good. <laughs> Mars Rover ain't looking too good. God. I guess there's only so many times you can sing to yourself happy birthday before you start to go a bit mad. I don't think he's gone mad, though. <laughs> he's probably with the base, here to arrest them. I don't think they ever expected to use the police feature on these ro rovers, but hey-ho. State your name, rank and intention. The Doctor. Doctor. Fun. <laughs> 
Oh god, gun to him, but he, he can't. <laughs> I mean, what else is there? Names of the doctor. My rank is doctor. And boys just want to have fun. <laughs> Man on Mars. How? Cut the chat, everyone. Chat second on my list. First being gum pointed at my head, which then puts my head second and chat third. I mean, put it down. Oh, you'd like that. And you'll find me someone who wouldn't? <laughs> True. Like, who wouldn't like it if you put down the gun aimed at their head? <laughs> How many people have you met where you aimed a gun at head and like, oh, yeah, that does it, yeah. Oh, I'll put it against my temple. Like, <laughs> who are you hanging out with? Why should I trust you? Because I give you my word. What do you want your miles away from home? It's all you've got. So you control that thing. To the right. Ralph keeps saying that. I think it's funny. I hate funny robots. <laughs> it is a bit funny. It's a bit Pokemon, as it is, isn't it? Gadget, gadget. Gadget, gadget, sparking out, you know, looks like it's about to blow up any second, but who who cares when it's just gadget, gadget? <laughs> I like gadget. Beauty. First garden off Earth. Eden. That's what we should have called this place. It's the Philippines, I bet. All those stories about them, Adelaide's gonna love that. Stealing her thunder. Um, <laughs> I, I'd probably, you know, other things to be worrying about than the, the Filipinos potentially getting to Mars. <laughs> you know, that man's ate a carrot and dropped... Not quite dead. He's fitting out, but not looking too good. I don't know what you. What, what, oh God! I don't know what's in the soil here. <laughs> Garden of Eden, you know. But instead of eating the apple and you know, sin, ate the carrot and died. Look at that space link project under wraps. Are you all right, mate? Are you okay? <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> I think I'd rather he'd have dropped dead. Oh no. <laughs> and he not looking too good. Turned into, I mean, a zombie of some point. His skin was grey and kind of cracking, kind of like stone. I don't know what's going on here, but I mean, we're in a very tight and an enclosed space on the surface of Mars. And we're trapped with whatever these are now. And the food supply is tainted. Big oh no. <laughs> got to be one of the independents, yeah? Right, yes. Okay. You are? Everyone on planet Earth knows who we are. You're the first. 2059. Oh! My head is so stupid. You're Captain Adelaide Brooks. <laughs> Don't beat yourself up too much, Doc. A lot of information. <laughs> oh, God. The first ever off-world colony here on Mars. And, you know, she's Captain Adelaide Brooke, but maybe don't mention you recognised her from the article about her dying. <laughs> Deputy Edward Gold, Tarakital, MD, Nurse Yuri Kerensky, Geologist Mia Bennett. Christ. <laughs> you know, like this guy went from not knowing who we are to suddenly being our biggest fan, knowing all of our exact names and titles. <laughs> oh, not good though, you know. The cuts to all their in obituaries all died 2059, present year. Doc, I, I think I can see why you were needed here. You're only 27 years old. As I said, everyone knows our names. Oh, I'll never forget them. What's the date? November 21st. Oh, no. <laughs> November 21st, 2059. I had to go back to look at this article a bit more. God. New a nuclear blast destroyed Bowie Base 1. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I mean, what could have caused the nuclear blast? I'd, I'd assume that they found out about this virus spreading and then to stop the virus, I mean, to stop the carriers of the virus, you know, getting on the rocket to return to Earth and take it there, Captain Adelaide set off a nuke <laughs> or something, you know, set off a blast to destroy the ship and everyone in it, including herself, to save them. Even though, you know, back home would never know, but doing it to save Earth. What's so important about my age? I should go. <laughs> I'm sorry with all of my heart. I've got no choice. Been an honor. Thank you. Gadget, gadget. <laughs> Little pet on the head for gadget, gadget. Ah, <laughs> oh, Doctor Excuse. I don't know if they're going to let you go, Doc. <laughs> and they've got your spacesuit, but, you know, this is small details. <laughs> oh, he has to go. Maybe it's just one of those fixed events, you know? He's mentioned fixed points in time, fixed events. Come see him, sir. Maybe he can save one of them, though. Like, you know, Donna said, you, you, like in Pfizer Pompeii, Donna saying, you don't have to save more, just save one. Just save one person. 
Maybe let's do that. Maybe let's say Gemma Chan, who I've... I, I thought it was her. I had to take a second just to look her a bit more, but yeah, that's Gemma Chan, isn't it? Thank you. The other two, hold on. Maggie, if you want to meet the only new human being, then come take a look. I really should go. I'm going over. Doctor, take your spacesuit lock it up. This started as soon as you arrived. <laughs> fair, fair, you know, fair to see that link. You show up and then all this happens, so yeah. <laughs> Doctor like, I should go. But hearing this, you know monstrous roar coming from Margaret's comms. <laughs> he can't help it, you know. Curious, curiosity killed the cat. But, you know, curiosity... God, does it get the doctor's heart going. Hearts going. <laughs> Was it worth it? Got excellent results. No. All of it. They say you sacrificed everything. Chaos back home. Climate. Oil apocalypse. Yes. It's worth it. That's the Adelaide Brook I always wanted to meet. <laughs> Big fan. Doctor getting a fangirl a little bit. <laughs> yeah. God. The way she describes it, you know. <laughs> the Earth almost facing extinction. Yeah. I guess it was worth it. A little bit of a break. Getting explored this new world. None of the worries are back home. Just doing your job here. Exploring this new place. Seeing this new place. Feeling a part of something. It's Maggie. Don't touch her. Maggie. She's still breathing. I need a full med pack. Don't touch her. Use the glove. Do what he says. Put her in isolation. Oh. Poor Margaret. <laughs> Not contaminated by the look of it right now, but you know, anything could happen. Just one, there was just one smock to the head. Blood there. Yeah, I still wouldn't touch her. Like she's been poked, stabbed with something for God knows what. For God knows what. So yeah, isolation, solid call. <laughs> That sound we heard from the biodome, according to the computer, it's Andy. Understood. Double check, thanks. Yeah, understandable. <laughs> Not good news, but you, you know what? Let's let's double check that one just to make sure. But yeah, that is, that is Andy, which leaves you know the big question of you're right there, Andy. <laughs> you're sounding a bit rabid, mate. It's Captain Brooke. Where are you? There you go. What's that device? Screwdriver. You the doctor or the janitor? Sounds like me. Maintenance man of the universe. The maintenance man of the universe. Doesn't have the same ring to it though, you know? Janitor Who. It just it just doesn't have the same ring to it. As as fun as, you know, waiting for the annual free four yearly announcement of who's the next janitor gonna be. <laughs> I think the doctor's a right call. You got birds. Good sign. In what way? Well, that's still alive. It's Maggie. She's awake. If you remember anything, let me know straight away. Just let me out of here. Twenty-four hours. <laughs> Yeah, guys, I don't think Maggie's going to be waiting 24 hours, honestly. <laughs> I don't think you're just groggy, honestly, Mags. I don't believe that. You all right? Andrew, look at me. <laughs> Shouldn't have approached, man. <laughs> oh, God, the way they light him, just, just his back. It's very well done. I give him that. <laughs> his white and out eyes, you know, where his pupils have kind of gone white with black in the center. Standard. <laughs> the cracks on his face. He was wet there. I don't know why. Whatever's taken Andy wants to be wet. I guess it would make sense. Mars very barren. No water. So, you know, a little dehydrated. Just wanted a cuppa and murder. But, you know, didn't even kill Maggie. So, you know. Just, just wanted a cuppa. That your brother? Only a repeat. Are you okay? Yeah. It's his husband. He spends money like an idiot. For Mikhail's birthday, don't buy me anything. George says fine. Bought him a car. <laughs> oh, Miguel and George. <laughs> Stan. Oh no to Maggie though. Oh God. I finally got her. Whatever Andy did to her. Fit it out. And just... I gotta shout out Murray Gold, I always do. Just the build up as she's like seizing and then it reaches the crescendo just as she goes limp. And then oh we'll know what, what comes next. Where does he live? On the Caspian Sea. By the sea. Earth is so much water. We should like that world. Water just pouring out. Yuri, calm down. Oh no. <laughs> Hearing about the water, the Caspian Sea, and liking it. I don't know what these creatures are. I'm, I'm, if I'm, they, they are pouring out water. I guess they need water. They're stuck on, they've become stuck on Mars. Very dry, desolate planet. You know, maybe hence the, the kind of cracking up skin they get. Um, 
losing all their water, so needing to replenish it. And so, you know, Earth, all that lovely, jubbly water down there, mm, looking like a perfect place to them. Hence wanting the rocket they have to go back. Hence the nuclear blast going off to stop them leaving the planet and getting to Earth. Is him, I guess, how this ends. Tarek! Where was he? She goes for the gun, he goes for peaceful negotiations. And <laughs> it's just so loud. And he's looking over just like, could you just shut up? I'm drowning this MFO. Could you give me a moment? <laughs> That's better. We've got to go, right? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm glad she didn't argue. She just instantly fully agreed. Yeah, she'd probably go. Let's run, yeah? <laughs> Airlock just in time. God, these things have a lot of water, though. I, I, you know, ha can, having that much water, though, you need a lot of water. Hence, Earth. <laughs> Keep surveillance closed down all water supplies. Human being. 60% water. Perfect host. I've got to go. Whatever started here, I can't see it to the end. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> They're trying to break their way in. I'll be honest, Doctor, I don't think Captain Adelaide here is just going to let you go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we've got these water monsters attacking. I don't think she's going to be like, oh, you have to pop off. Oh, well, thanks for coming, love. Oh, do you, you, sure, you want to take anything to go? No? You sure? Not a snack for the road? No, all right, then you go. We'll, we'll deal with this. All righty, all right. No. <laughs> I think mean, you're going to have to stay and help see this one through, Doc. <laughs> Got time. You can run faster than us. Gadget, gadget, gadget. <laughs> <laughs> Poor that guy. <laughs> Doctor tricking Gadget Gadget out here. God. <laughs> I'm so used to all the running. I really am. But there's something a little bit funny about the way these water things are running. <laughs> I don't know. They're just so serious, stone faced. But no, yeah, Doctor's tricked out Gadget, and away he goes. God, he's blazing a trail. Pop off, you gadget. <laughs> come on, come on! Gadget, gadget. Well, you hate it, robot. I do! <laughs> yeah, even though he hates robots, not a fan of them, he's not just going to leave Gadget Gadget to die out here. You know, especially after we just hit, we hitched a ride on him. He's not that kind of guy. Get in, Gadget, please. Do you know who I am? Captain Adelaide Brooke. Uruguay and short on the bell. in Uruguay. What language is that? Ancient North Martian. It's like she recognised it. Her eyes are different. Clear, yeah, like she's closer to human. Of all the ridiculous things going on, him being able to speak an ancient Martian language, honestly, you just roll with it. <laughs> they always reach a point where they just start rolling with things and you're gonna have to get there very soon Adelaide because <laughs> it is going off the doctor knows in the eyes as well like I did they are very clear eyes <laughs> where'd you get your water from on top of an underground glacier filtered it's safe looks like it frozen down there viral life form a mouth all black and some sort of fission it doesn't just hide in water create water oh it creates water it also wants a lot of water. <laughs> like, we're above this, you know, glacier on Mars, and that's the nice water they've been hiding in. But, I mean, small glacier on Mars? Earth. Oh, all that lovely jubbly water on Earth. Mmm. Mmm. In my, in my tummy, in my cracked old mouth. She was looking at the screen. She wanted Earth. Action procedure one. I think I don't know that. I think you need reminding. Yeah. Well, at least I'm good for something. Not again. Sorry, sorry. It means evacuation. Going home. Mm -hmm. They're getting ready for evacuation. And the doctor's thinking, well, <laughs> I know you don't get home. And I know this place blows up with you there, so... <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> and doctor also thinking, well, my... My car's here, so I can't, I can't hit your eye on the rocket. Are you sure I can't just leave? <laughs> what about Max? She stays behind. No way to contain her on board. Of course, the only problem is. Thank you, Doctor. Your spacesuit will be returned. This thing is clapped. Didn't affect the birds or the insect. Chose the human. Water can wait. Any one of us could already be infected. Oh no. <laughs> they were, they were ready. Just let him go. Take your space suit off. You go. You know, no room on the rocket. Well, we actually do have room on the rocket, but still, no. Bye bye. <laughs> but Doctor Wright. You've been filtering the water and everything, but clearly that didn't help. And you've been consuming the water and, you know, rehydrating all your dehydrating food with it and eating it, its proceeds, meaning <laughs> they could be waiting in any and all of you. 
And so you could go home and take that home. Only one option. Kablooey. We're only presuming infection. If we can find out when it got through... I'm going to inspect the ice field. I should leave. You're in the old mate. No point meeting the ice field. <laughs> Bloody hell, Doctor. You and your curiosity. <laughs> I should go. I should take my say shoot, go back to the Tarzan Lake. I should. <sighs> that ice field does sound good. <laughs> He can't help himself. He can't help himself. I'm sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> Maggie, not too big a fan of being left behind. And we've seen these doors cannot hold them, so. And good luck to you, sirs. Good luck to you. Camera's down. We've lost her. Uh -oh. <laughs> she gave him the the war cry, or the warning, or the the signal, or whatever it is. It doesn't sound good, you know. Just that deep, deep scream from her doesn't sound too good. Find a noble race and empire out of snow. Perhaps they found something down there. Is there might their wisdom to freeze. You know so much about it. It's like you know more. Certain moments in time are fixed. What happens here must always happen. Aww. She's very confused as he talks about wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. <laughs> but yeah, that's why he's so he was so insistent on having to go because there's a fixed moment in time. It cannot be changed. It cannot be altered, like Pompeii. Um, but it does make me think, you know, about what he said earlier. No, about well, you know about fires of Pompeii again with Donna saying, you know, you can't save them all, but you could save just one person. And I feel like he might. I feel like it might be her. You know, we saw her daughter and granddaughter earlier about, you know, <laughs> on the phone. And I feel like he might save one person. He might save her and bring her home to her family after she gave, spent her whole life trying to get here. Started 15 years ago. Never told anyone. You told your daughter. Maybe she tells a story to her daughter. I'm coming back. I never saw her again. In the sky. It saw me. And then... Oh, wow. <laughs> Days about that. That's beautiful. God, this bloody music as well. God, Murray Gold, <laughs> an artiste, honestly. God, we could flash back already to the finale. <laughs> She's just a kid. It's we're in the twenty fifties now. God, alone in the attic. Dalek sees her and flies away. Doesn't kill her. Doesn't exterminate her. Leaves young her. I mean, staring up at the heavens as this creature spares her life. Staring up at planets above her. And obviously, <laughs> he decided to spend the rest of her life trying to get up there. She found no way to Mars, I give her that. I knew I would follow it. But not for revenge. What would be the point? That's what makes you remarkable. That's how you create history. What do you mean? It began a journey, takes the human race out to the stars. It begins with you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Doctor in Amazement uh, does begin with her. She led this to Mars, and then, you know, from the first colony on Mars, it went out and out to the stars and beyond to the future. <laughs> and then your granddaughter to inspire her, so that in 30 years, Susie Fontana Brook, pilot of the first light speed ship, one day, a brook will even fall in love with a Tandonian prince, the start of a whole new species. Oh, The tears in her eyes, you know? I mean, God, feeling so lonely on this planet. Maybe at this point, feeling like <laughs> since some of it was wasted, this close to death and everything, but hearing all this about her daughter, about her granddaughter, about the things her granddaughter will do, and then her daughter, and then her daughters, and then her daughters, and then children upon children, and children, children, generations of her family, from her exploring the stars, creating new species and beyond. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Why tell me? It was consolation. Yesterday, water fell bust. But that means the infection arrived today. The water's only cycled out after a week. The rest of us can't be infected. We can leave. Or slay. <laughs> One little filter breaks and all this happens. But we can all leave. Bada bing, bada boom. We're feeling good. <laughs> oh. She knows what the doctor meant there. <laughs> Why is he telling her this consolation? You know, she won't be alive to see it. But he can tell her. So she knows that. What she did, what she dedicated her life to, it had such meaning. I get your shit. I'm saving my people, you save yourself. I know what this moment is. It's the moment we escape. Now get out. Stop. Stop. 
<laughs> Trying to fight against the future, fight against what has to happen. Doctor knowing she can't. <laughs> you know, it's a fixed point. You can't fight against it. But she's going to try anyway, as those water creatures are climbing. Oh no. <laughs> Pressure on top of the module. They're on the roof? Oh no. <laughs> yeah. They're on the roof. And by the look of it, they're getting ready to break down the roof. And... Might want to get a move on. <laughs> if your plans to get out of here, might want to get a move on. Oh. <laughs> Doctor. Making the decision, you know, it's clearly in a lot of thought, but doing what he has to do and walking away. <laughs> like he said he needed to do hours ago, <laughs> he needs to go. But, yeah, I don't know if you do have to go right now, Doc. <laughs> I, I don't know if you've changed events here a bit too much, and you've helped him a bit too much. I think you might have to... <laughs> I don't think you can leave just yet, Doc. Denied. Tell me what happened. Grandpa, please. Crush you. You shot Maddie Stone, but you didn't. I loved you for that. Imagine you were in Pompeii. You tried to save them, but you do so. You make it happen. Anything I do just makes it happen. Oh. Doctor's beating himself up even more, you know? <laughs> Blaming himself. I mean, for everything. For, you know, the master being revealed. Blaming himself for the journey's end and all of that. Losing Donna. Blame himself for Pompeii because it got to the point where he had to make it happen to save everyone. And it's now here. <laughs> Constantly beating himself up. Oh, Doc going through it. I know you might not want to go Doc from this form, but God, you've, you've been through the miller, mate. I think you might need to. <laughs> Action 5 is detonation. Nuclear device at the heart of the central dome. Today, Captain Brooke activates that device. No one ever knows why. You were saving her. That's what inspires your granddaughter. Oh. Telling her. I don't know if she'll find comfort in that moment, but, <laughs> you know, knowing at least what she does saves the earth, inspires her granddaughter to go on and do all the things he told her that she'll do and her children will do and her children will do and on and on, etc. Infinite. <laughs> She takes your people out into the galaxy because you die while she's trying to meet you. Why won't you help, Doctor? Why can't you change it? Sometimes I do. Most times I can save someone, but not you. <laughs> yeah. He tries to save someone, even just one person, but... She, of all the people here, she is the one he can't save. Because her dying is what leaves, leads the Earth into exploring the stars and everything. So she has to die. You can save one of the others, though. And, God, who's the main contender, I guess? Well, I guess Gemma Chan. <laughs> she was only 20, God. <laughs> he said six or seven. You know, so young. If we're going to have a volunteer for who we save, I guess. You wanted all your life while that Dalek spared you. I think it knew your death is fixed in time forever. And that would explain that. <laughs> the Dalek didn't spare out the kindness of his, of his heart. <laughs> the Dalek spared her because... Her death isn't meant to be then. Her death has to be now to inspire her granddaughter to go on and on and on. To get to the stars. And everything that leads. Even the Dalek can't interfere with that. <laughs> Damn you. Get the shuttle. Did I to attack you? We'll go round. Steffi! Close the door! We'll come get you! <laughs> <laughs> Pain. <laughs> the water flooding in. Trapped, you know. All, <laughs> all the exits slowly becoming trapping, you know, trapping them with water. She's trapped on this small little waterfall that's formed. We'll come get you. You won't be able to come get her. <laughs> and the doctor just frozen, knowing he should leave, but listening to all of this, blaming himself the whole damn way. Hello, Hello Ma. Uber is for <laughs> You can see even, yeah, I think they listen to it. It's the tears in the doctor's eyes. <laughs> she watches the video of her children one more time as the war covers her. And then she fits out before the full infection takes place. Jesus. <laughs> I, I can I can see why you have to get to security level five for the kablooey. We are gonna fly. I need air, inspection air. 30 lockdown. 
You better go. Move. One drop. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is so hard to watch right now. It's just watching the inevitable happen as one by one they fall to infection before the inevitable nuclear explosion happens and the doctor slowly walking away having to listen to the whole damn thing. You know? Known to just one drop and you're done. What the hell do you mean? Compromise. And the shadow gone, hence why they couldn't just lie away. And so <laughs> slowly we work our way up to nuclear detonation. The inevitable of it all. <sighs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> the dogs have really been through it, you know. <laughs> I mean, to just walk away knowing there's nothing he can do here. They want this ship to get to Earth. You never could forgive me. <sighs> See you later. Jesus. <laughs> Using the last of the free will he has as it slowly takes over to press the self-destruct and destroy the rocket so they can't get to Earth. Hero. And, I mean, the airtight airlock broken. All that's left to do is give us all a quick death and kill all the monsters as well with one little self-destruct button. All is broken! And not just the time though. They died. It took it all with some time not to get the line. But they died! The Time Lord! Ah. <laughs> oh, beautifully well done. Beautifully well done. Hearing all, this vo well, all his voice in his head. <laughs> Constantly talking about him being the last of the Time Lords. All the Time Lords are gone. All the people dying. All of it. And just having enough of it at this point. And saying, screw this. I'm, make I'm making a change here. <laughs> Don't die with her. They said I was gonna die. You will knock four times. I don't hear anyone knocking. Three knocks is all you're getting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, doctor's just saying no at this point. Saying, hey, if death's coming for me, if I'm going out, I'm going down mother trucking swinging, baby. <laughs> you want four knocks? I'll give you three, baby, and then I'll make you go bang. <laughs> doctor take him no prisoners now. You said we can so once upon a time, there were people in charge of those laws, but they died. They all died. Do you know who that leaves? Me! The laws of time are mine! And they will obey me! Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Look to realising all these thick points and everything he's been talking about. It was just the laws of the time laws, and he's the last one, so... He makes the laws now. Time obeys him, but, um... <laughs> Doctor. Yeah, you're changing quite a big thing. If, if your plan is to save Captain Adelaide here, you know, whose death leads to the human race exploring the stars and everything that comes from it, you know, you, you're changing quite a lot there, Doc. And I, I think I can see how that kind of event might lead to the end of time. <laughs> not beaten! You've got spaceships! But I'm just fighting the flood! We're fighting time itself! And I'm gonna win! And there's the flood, <laughs> breaking the ice, freeing all the rest of the bacteria that, you know, of them inside. <laughs> but Doctor's ready. He's getting me hyped up. Ready to fight the flood, fight time itself, and he's going to win, baby. He's swinging for the fences. He's hitting home runs. I'm with him. What's in section F? Anyone? Nothing here. It's just storage. The weather spikes <gasps> and the robots. The apple class. Okay. I'm a funny robot. <laughs> Oh, thank God. <laughs> I had to celebrate when he said we're in storage because I know who's in storage. Gadget, Gadget's here, baby. <laughs> My favourite funny little robot guy. Oh, he's so adorable. I'm so easy to please. Put a nice little robot in front of me. Give me canine. Give me Gadget here. I'm happy all day. I'm pleased as a peach. <laughs> Protocol. Adelaide, what are you doing? Action fine. If I have to fight you as well, then I will. <laughs> it's really a battle against time. Because <laughs> Adelaide's armed the nuke. Which fair, you know, she's doing what she has to do. It's the next security protocol, and for the future of the human race, she has to die here. And that means that this man who's come here, claimed to be from the future, calling himself the Doctor, who's insistent on quote unquote fighting against time, um <laughs> so be it, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> Truly a battle against time. Oh, I'm about to see Go Go Gadget here. <laughs> Power of TARDIS. <laughs> it's a, you know what, as far as playing goes, it's all we've got. Get Gadget, rock it over. TARDIS, bring it here to us. Bada bing, bada boom, we're out of here. Awful idea for the whole, you know, time. But wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff, Doc. You, you're, you're, you're time's daddy at this point, like you say. <laughs> Oh, Mars so peaceful. <laughs> it did just have a nuke explode all the life on it, but so peaceful. <laughs> Getting out just in time. Go, go, Gadget, baby. And Gadget lived. Oh, that might be the best news of it all. Gadget lived. <laughs> Isn't anyone going to thank me? He's lost his signal. Doesn't know where he is. <laughs> I don't think anyone knows where they hit stock. <laughs> I respect it from the Doctor Who team, though. They said, hey, we're doing these specials in 2009. End of time's end in the year. So we're not going to have the regular Christmas special. I don't know if we are, actually. But let's say we're not going to have the regular Christmas special. <sighs> let's, let's just make it snow in this one. <laughs> I respect the hustle. That's my house. Don't you get it? This is the 21st of November, 2059. Same day on Earth. And it's snowing. I love snow. What is that thing? It's bigger on the inside. She said the line. <laughs> it is. It is bigger on the inside. Doc's having a wondrous time. You know, just looking around. I love snow. <laughs> After like, looking at him like he's insane. Well, After everything he's done today, he is a little bit, isn't he? <laughs> Who the hell are you? Look after her. Yes, ma'am. Genuinely one of the most sane responses I've ever seen to this. <laughs> it is very overwhelming. Who the hell are you? What the hell? Run. <laughs> Normal reaction, I Gemma Chan. I, I understand. You can see them again. Family reunion. My granddaughter. The person who's supposed to be calm. I never exist. Different details, but the story's the same. You can't know that. And if my family changes, the whole of history could change. Love this woman, Captain Adelaide. <laughs> She's very right. <laughs> this is insane. You're risking the entirety of his history, Doctor. All to save one person. You're an insane man. Bizarre. <laughs> but brilliant. Truly brilliant. No one should have that much power. Tough. You should have left us there. I've done this sort of thing before. Say some little people. But never someone as important as you. I'm oh, good. Little people? Who decides they're so unimportant? You? Um... <laughs> Doctor's losing it a little bit here. <laughs> Isolation's not doing him too good. He is losing it a little. You know? Talking about little people. That's not very the Doctor, you know? All, you know, wonderful, brilliant, not ordinary people. Talking about saving little people. But now saving someone huge and important. Oh, he's so good. Is the Doctor okay? <laughs> I think you might really need a regeneration right now, mate. For a long time now, I thought I was just a survivor, but I'm not. I'm the winner. That's who I am. The Time Lord Victorious. And there's no one to stop you. No. That's so scary. <laughs> David Tennant is so good. Because he's just been so fun and jolly and emotional and everything. And then suddenly he's turned into the most terrifying man on earth with this speech. Time Lord Victorious. It sounds like something I'd hear the Master say. The Time Lord Victorious is wrong. That's for me to decide. Now you better get home. All locked up. That's easy. Is there nothing you can't do? Not anymore. Uh, he's not binding himself by the time by the laws of the Time Lords anymore. Oh God, Time Lord Victorious is terrifying. I am not prepared for this two-part finale. Finale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously she wants to see her daughter and her granddaughter, but accepting that she has to die for the future of the human race and getting the job done one way or another. Oh, God, I'm just reading this newspaper article as well. <laughs> oh, God, Yuri and Mia praising Adelaide as the hero who saved them. Uh, virus on Mars, yep, yep. Not mentioning the Doctor. Fair enough. Fair enough. Captain Adelaide, a hero. 
Doctor, sorry. <laughs> Someone had to do something. Oh, the mythical Doctor, I see. Nope, they mentioned the Doctor. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the Time Lord Victorious is wrong. I've gone too far. Is this it? Aww. Realising and accepting that, yeah, he's gone too far. It's got to his head too much. He's been through too much. Hearing the song of the Ood in his head, turning and seeing one of the Ood as well. Probably a figment of his imagination, but yeah. Like they said, his song is coming to a close. And he knows it probably should. <laughs> My death. Is it time? No. <laughs> it's not time yet. It is not time yet. Oh, you hear that sound in his head in the background. Just two knocks. Two more to go. That was so good. God. I, would, I give one final shout out to Murray Gold. Because, I mean, his work is always ex exquisite. But his work in these specials, especially this one throughout, is just phenomenal. That was an incredible episode. <laughs> shout out Captain Adelaide. Did what had to be done for the human race. A real one. Oh, I'm hyped. I'm hyped. Doctor's starting to lose it. And he's only got two more adventures to go. But that's next time. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Hello. Would love to hear what you think of that incredible special. And leave a like if you enjoyed. I hope you had. Subscribe for more so you don't miss a thing. Two more adventures with David Tennant's 10th Doctor to go. The end of time, part one and part two. Oh, I don't think you're going to want to miss them. Because these have been very... I mean, his whole journey's been good. And it's about to reach its climax. And you're not going to want to miss that. So make sure you don't by subscribing, like, thoughts and comments down below. Love hearing what you think as always. And thank you for your support as always. And as always as well, I just want to say a very special thank you for watching.